nice. Let's see what happens if we put it into the liquid nitrogen. And while we're waiting for that rubber band, nice stretchy rubber band, okay? Okay, I'm going to take this rubber band and put it into the liquid nitrogen. Now, like anything that goes into the liquid nitrogen, it is causing the liquid nitrogen to boil because it's so much hotter than the liquid nitrogen. But it doesn't take very long before this little rubber band has uh, uh, cooled down to the temperature of the liquid nitrogen and the boiling has stopped. So that means when I take it out, it snaps like it was a dry twig. If I just warm it up with my hands a little bit, it's a nice stretchy little bag. Stuff is really, really cold. <laughs> and, you know, if you've got something that cold, then why not use it to uh, cool down your uh, atoms molecules? <sighs> So you can make them go more slowly, so you can uh, study them more carefully and maybe make a better, uh, a better clock. So let's put some more. Now, how cold is this stuff? It's the coldest stuff you've ever seen, unless you've been in a low temperature physics laboratory, but how cold is it? Well, to understand how cold it is, we have to think about the way that physicists like to describe temperatures. Now, on a daily basis, we say what the temperature is in degrees Celsius. If it's zero, well, we know that's the freezing point of water. That's fairly cold, but it can get colder than, than, than zero. Uh, where I live, we often have days in the winter that are minus 15. Uh, physicists don't like these negative numbers. It's, it's kind of inconvenient. So we have a different temperature scale. We have a temperature scale where the coldest possible temperature that you could even imaginably have is called absolute zero. That's zero on this scale, the Kelvin scale. Well, first of all, why is there a coldest temperature? Well, remember that the difference between hot and cold um, is the difference between fast and slow. It's a measure of the kinetic energy of the atoms. Well, so what's the slowest you can go? Well, the slowest you can go is stopped. And so that means that there is a lowest temperature. Now it turns out because of little details having to do with quantum mechanics and Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, that even at absolute zero, the atoms don't actually stop. But let's just say between friends, that absolute zero is the temperature at which the atomic motion stops. So there is a lowest temperature, and we call that temperature zero. Measured up from zero, the room in which we are is about 300 degrees. The ice point is about 273. The temperature of dry ice, pretty cold stuff, is about uh, 195 degrees above absolute zero. The temperature, the coldest temperature ever measured anywhere on the face of the Earth in Antarctica in the wintertime was 185 degrees above absolute zero. 185 degrees above absolute zero. This stuff, which is so cold that when you pour it out, it boils. This stuff is 77 degrees above absolute zero. This stuff is really, really cold. This stuff, let's have a look at our, uh, at our nice bouncy ball. Remember how nice and bouncy it was? 
it breaks like it was made out of porcelain. This stuff is incredibly cold. And so it seems perfectly reasonable if you want to cool down a, uh, a hot gas to make the atoms and molecules move more slowly, then why not use this liquid nitrogen to cool it down? But some of you may have noticed that there is something funny going on here with the balloons. It seems like the volume of balloons that I put in there, how many balloons did I put in? How many? I'm sorry? Five. You know, each balloon was about the volume of the, uh, the container. So how is that possible? It's possible because these balloons are as flat as pancakes. There's another one. Now that one's like a frisbee. This one, you know, is starting to reinflate. There's... Okay, so that's the five balloons, right? Two blue ones, a black one, a, um, uh, a green one, and a purple one, right? Okay, how many uh, more black ones did I put in? Uh, what about a dark blue? How about a green? How about another black one? How about another black one? How about uh, a... <laughs> <laughs> so there's even more balloons in here, but I, uh, they're at the bottom, and I don't want to reach in and get them. Uh, so what was going on here? <laughs> what was going on here was that uh, when uh, I put the, these balloons with the... Uh, let me... Uh, let me This is amazing. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Look at that. I think that's the biggest piece left. <laughs> Your mother was right. <laughs> Don't ever, ever put a closed container of liquid into the oven. This has dramatic consequences. But let's get back to our uh, let's get back to our uh, uh, our balloons. Why did the balloons collapse? Because you got these balloons, you got all these atoms moving around really fast, hitting the sides of the balloon from the inside. That's what keeps the balloon inflated. But when the balloon went into the liquid nitrogen, the air in there condensed. And now you've got the atoms, they're frozen, they're stuck to each other, they're stuck to the inside of the balloon. They're not going to make very good clocks because this perfect ticking frequency relies 